Since division, Egyptian style, relies on finding multiples, aliquot parts, and doubling, we need the 2 over n table to perform other divisions. Unfortunately, this means we also need to have a table of the doubles of the unit fractions. And such tables were probably part of the standard reference works the scribes had. If you did this for a living, you probably had your own copy of the 2 over n table. So, for example, let's divide 23 by 7. So we'll find our multiples first. So 1 gets us 7, 2 gets us 14, and we don't need to go beyond that because 4 would get us too much, so we do want to take our fractional parts, and the only aliquot part 7 has is 1 seventh, which gets us 1, and we can double 1 seventh either by remembering what its decomposition is or looking it up on the table. If we look it up on the 2 over n table, we find the double of 1 seventh is a quarter and a 28th. And now we'll select the pieces we need. If I want to make 23, I need a 14 and a 7. That's 21, and so I'll need two more. So I'll also need the 4th and the 28th. And again, while we don't need to do it, we could lightly cover up this 7th, which we don't need. And so altogether, my quotient is 3, a 4th, and a 28th. Or we could do 44 divided by 13. So 1 gets us 13, 2 gets us 26, and we might take stock at this point, 3 gets us 39. Since we want 44, we need 5 more. The only aliquot part of 13 is a 13th. We need to double this amount, so we'll look at our table. And the double of a 13th is an 8th, a 52nd, and a 104th. Now since all of these fractions have even denominators, doubling them is easy to do. A double of an 8th is a quarter. A double of a 52nd is a 26th, and a double of a 104th is a 52nd. And of course, doubling 2 gets us 4. And so, to get our 44, we need 39, 1, and 4. But we don't need the other rows. And so we can just list our fractional parts. We have 3, a quarter, a 13th, a 26th, and a 52nd.